In this edition of Locked On Capitals, it is the player and review of Alexi Protus. Let's talk about Alexi next on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available in video form. So head on over to YouTube and check it out. And when you're on YouTube, make sure and hit that subscribe button. And if you like the videos, hit the thumbs up button. It really helps grow the channel. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we are doing the player profile, the player review of Alexi Protus. And where does he fit into this Capitals organization? We hear all the time that this team needs to get younger, that it needs to get faster. What is the future face of the Washington Capitals? It's going to be your Alexi Protus, your Leeson, your Faravari, um, your Connor McMichael, your Hendrix LaPierre. In this particular episode, we are going to talk about Protus and where does he fit into this lineup in Nova Caps here. They talk about that Protus had another excellent season with regards to development at 21. Protus is by most accounts well ahead of his development schedule and will be a serious contender for a Capitals roster spot in September. And it was, as we all know, he did have some time on the Washington Capitals organization and it's some good experience for these younger players to get a shot on the big team and to to see what they have. And I think he's going to get another opportunity with the Capitals in the fall to kind of prove, does he have a spot on this team? I got to say that it's going to be a bit difficult based on the acquisitions that the Capitals made in the offseason. Your Dylan Strom, your Connor Brown, Gustafson, you know, a lot of the holes that were on this lineup were plugged by Brian McClellan. So these younger players are going to have to battle it out in camp like no other. If you want to be here, you're going to have to prove it. And Alexi is going to have to do that as well. And uh, I think that, you know, just taking a look at the book on him, he seems to be a really solid player. Protest demonstrated he is very close to more of a permanent role with the Capitals this season. Regardless of his near-term assignment, he continued to improve in puck battles at the NHL level and has shown the ability to create plays at the NHL level speed. He also demonstrated his physical play along the boards is close to NHL ready. And that's what I was saying is that when I see him play, I don't see a player and I think to myself, he doesn't belong here. He looks like he is ready for the big time, but he, you know, like I talked about, this lineup is pretty solidified with some big names. You're really going to have to, I hate to say it, hope for injury or hope for, you know, some poor play on the team to get your shot. But I think that, you know, especially next season for these younger players that want their spot on on their team, that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to hope that, you know, for whatever reason that there's uh, poor player performance or there's some sort of injury or something of that nature to try to get their spot in the lineup. With the likely absence of Nicholas Backstrom and Tom Wilson, the Capitals will need at least one additional center and winger to start the season, while Connor McMichael and a potential free agent signing will be a stiff competition for the second and or third center position. Protus is primed at minimum a depth center or forward position with the Washington Capitals this season. Protus has also spent time at the left wing last season, so he is flexible in the lineup and will be a huge asset. Look for Protus to be on the opening night roster in October. I I don't think that that is going to be the case. That was the assessment of the writer of this article. But I, I just, for me, I have a hard time seeing him being on the opening night roster. Maybe he'll be a depth guy on the team, but I I don't think that ultimately that's what we want for Alexi or any of these other players. And like I say, the lineup is pretty solidified, but what is the one thing that we know about the Capitals and the Capitals last season is they faced a lot of injuries, so you can never have too too much depth. So if you have someone like an Alexi Protus that can come in and fill a role of a forward that's injured, 
then th that's all for the better. And I think that, you know, a lot of times that's how you end up getting your big experience on the team is to, to look for your opportunities. And I think that, you know, kind of like with Alexi, he's going to have to do the same thing. And, uh, you know, he did have a good season with the Capitals and with the Bears. And uh, it's just, you know, kind of ultimately, where does he fit in on this team? You know, I think that, you know, change is afoot. Change is coming um, on this Washington Capitals team. But I think that you're going to kind of see the same players that are going to try to maintain the Alex Ovechkin, quote unquote, rock the red era for as long as they can. And then you're going to start to see wholesale changes. I don't think that we want to waste, shall we say, the Alex Ovechkin years with a bunch of young players that are an unproven commodity. So I think that Brian McClellan and company, and as we hear uh, Ted Leonsis talk about that it's going to be more of a retooling. And I think that, you know, that is what the Washington Capitals did in this offseason is it was a retool. They didn't go out and tear it down to the studs and say, you know, uh, Ovechkin is going to be the only recognizable name on the roster. You know, have fun with that. You know, that wasn't a, a real smart move. And if you want to take a look at the Washington Nationals, how did that go for them? Rather poorly, one of the worst, if not the worst record in baseball. And uh, I don't think that we want to have that same thing for the Washington Capitals. And I know we won't because there were certain agreements uh, that were made to Alex Ovechkin that he is going to play on a competitive team. And uh, I think that, you know, going forward, you're going to start to see these players slowly integrate, just like you saw Martin Faravari this last year. You saw Connor McMichael kind of working his way into the lineup. It's not going to happen overnight, but it's going to take some time. But I think that, you know, th these are going to be the faces of your Washington Capitals in years to come. So, you know, like I say, just be patient and bide your time knowing that you will have a spot on this team at some point. Um, you know, like this writer thought that he was going to have a spot on the team this next year. I, I would be a little bit hesitant uh, to think that. I think that, you know, it's possible, you know, if, you know, he really impresses in camp or if there's some sort of injury, sure, then there's a possibility. But I think he will have a, a hard time cracking the opening night lineup. All right. So after the break here, we are going to continue to talk about Alexi Protus. But first... BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in all your betting needs. Find all of your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. And guys, if you haven't done this, go over to BetOnline.net. It makes betting on games and looking up stats uh, on these different games that much more exciting. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, welcome back to this edition of Locked On Capitals. In this episode, we are talking about Alexi Protas and where does he fit into this team? Let's just kind of take a look at uh, his vitals or his history. Who is he as a player? Protas is a six foot six inch, 210 pound left handed forward. That's a big guy, I got to say. Drafted by the Washington Capitals in the third round, 91st overall of the 2019 NHL entry draft. The 21-year-old Belarus spent the last two seasons playing on the Dynamo Minsk in the, of the KHL and the Hershey Bears in the AHL. He also played with Belarus national team last spring in the World Championship. Prota signed a three-year entry-level contract for $825,000, 833 on July 10th, 2019, and had two entry-level slide seasons. He also restricted free agent at the end of the 24-25 season. So just taking a look at Alexi, a big guy. And you know, six foot six, 210 pounds. That's the kind of player that you're looking for. You know, I'm six foot five myself. And, um, you know, just saying, looking at his weight, he could probably bulk up a little bit. Um, six foot six, 210, you know, maybe that's lean muscle. But uh, I just, you know, based on looking at the vitals for him, it looks like he could probably bulk up a little bit. But, um, you know, that's something that you can work on if you take a look at Tom Wilson in his first couple years with the Washington Capitals. Uh, he did not look like the player that he is today. So a career summary, the 2018-19 season with Protus 
was his first in the North uh, in North America for the season. He would record 11 goals and 29 assists in 61 games for the Prince Albert Raiders in the WHL. Protus would eventually work his way up to the top of the lineup um, of the season with Brett Leeson and Sean Montgomery and go down to win an, an Ed Cup. Um, Protus would also record two goals and three assists on the Belarus junior team in the World Juniors. And, uh, you know, that's, he did have uh, some, some great time with the Capitals. And as you can see, he had a good, you know, some good opportunities with the Belarus team that he was playing on there as well. So the 1920 season was a tale of two seasons for the quote unquote, the Viper Protus, who was selected as the alternate captain for the Raiders, started the season with 18 goals and 24 assists in 27 games before departing for World Juniors at the end of November, following a good showing for the Belarus team where he recorded four goals and three assists in just five games. Protus returned to Prince Albert in late December. The second half of the season was not as productive. He recorded 13 goals and 25 assists in 31 games, still a decent finish. The 2021 season was jam-packed with hockey for protests. While many prospects were struggling to find ice time, protests would find when play from September to May, he began the season as a loan to the Dynamo Minsk in the KHL. He would record 10 goals and 8 assists in 58 regular season games and one goal and three assists in five postseason games before being reassigned to Hershey in April. He would record two goals and five assists in 16 games in Chocolate Town. Protus would then leave Hershey for the World Championship in Latvia and record two assists in six games played. The 21-22 season was another excellent development season for the six foot six forward. Protus made the NHL debut on November 1st, 2021 against the Tampa Bay Lightning and recorded nine points, three goals, six assists in 33 games with the Capitals this season. Protus would return to Hershey in February and demonstrated very little, if any, slump time after experiencing the NHL. Protus was arguably the best Bears forward in April, recording two goals and seven assists for the offensively challenged Bears. And, um, you know, that's that's what if you take a look at him, the the line between the NHL and the AHL is razor fine. And if you talk, you know, Braden Holtby always said that all the time is that if he can get that kind of production down in Hershey, I think that. You know, uh, he in his when he did play with the Capitals, he played really well. So I think that, you know, I, I think, you know, that there's some players that are a bit further out than others. I think that Protus is closer to cracking the big team than some of the other uh, names that you hear listed, like your Leeson and um, and different players like that. Um, and just taking a look at how he plays in Hershey and how he did playing in juniors. I think that uh, I think that he will end up playing very well, or I should say, in his uh, team that he played back at home. And I do think that there is a big upward uh, trajectory for him. Um, and I think that you know, just taking a look at some of the different stats on him, I think that you know, like I say, he is probably going to be ready for prime time uh, sooner than we think. And uh, when he did play with the Capitals, and then you know, he played on the big team, and then he ended up going back down. It was kind of a sad thing because you know, I think that when he played on the Capitals, he played, he did a good job. He did what they asked him to do. It was just trying to find his spot on the team that was difficult. And uh, I think that, you know, like they were talking about here, maybe he'll he'll find a way to crack his way onto the roster next season. Maybe it'll be the year after that. But I do think uh, that things are looking up for Alexi Protas as, uh, you know, this team is going to get younger at some point. It's not going to be tomorrow, but uh, a bigger, a bigger and better things are for Protas in the future. All right. So after the break here, we are going to continue to talk about Alexi Protas and where does he fit into this team and what is his origin story? We'll talk about that next. Hello and welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. In this episode, we are doing a player review and a kind of a profile of Alexi Protas, uh, who saw a role on the Washington Capitals this last season. So the scouting report on Alexi is uh, uh, the interesting one. The huge six foot six inch Belarus forward has good hockey sense and playmaking skills. He has had to add strength and figures to play 
at well over 200 pounds when he fills out. We'll have to improve his skating, which is only adequate as he enters his 20s. His size alone should ensure him a spot on the, uh, in an NHL career. Um, he is merely an adequate skater. If he improves, he will become an impact top six forward. So the long range potential, as they saw in him in this scouting re report, was enormous, a talented forward with good upside. And when I'm doing these player profiles and reviews, that's what I look for is I look for the scouting report, the origin story, if you will, you know, what, who were these players in their younger day and uh, how do they stack up in the future? And uh, just taking a look at that uh, scouting report on him is they, they say that he needs to work on a few things, but there's a lot of players that need to work on some things out there. Uh, they talk about that. He will have to improve his skating. He's going to have to bulk up, which I talked about in the previous segment. Um, but his size alone, like they say, should ensure him an NHL career. And I do think that's true because, you know, if you can get a big forward out there that can, can kind of hold his own and, uh, you know, because some of these these players that get into the league, like I was talking about uh, Hendricks Lop here in the last episode, and that was one of the things that he said that he needed to do as well was bulk up uh, because otherwise, you know, there's some big dudes in the NHL that can kind of push you off the puck. Um, so in, in, in this example with Hendricks or excuse me, with Alexi Protas, I think that, uh, you know, that's good for him, that he has a bigger frame. You're not necessarily going to be able to push him off the puck, uh, as easy as you would say a smaller person. So I do think that there is a, a huge, uh, an upward trajectory for Mr. Protas, um, in the, in the season to come with the Capitals. And, you know, that's the thing I'm talking about. Is he going to have a spot? On this team, I mean th that remains to be seen. Uh, like I say, injury would be one of the things that would allow him to to find a spot on this team. But you know, I, it's going to be a bit difficult for him to to work his way and uh, and find his way um, on this team. And just kind of taking a look here in this article, they break it down month by month um, where he started off and where he's at. Um, and you know, he did, he did a pretty good job playing for the Capitals. He did, did a good job playing for the bears and his team back at home. Um, they talk about in November, Protus skated in two games with the bears in November. Protus dished out a first period assist against Springfield on November 7th. The protest had a series of call-ups to the Capitals and returns to Hershey over the last month on his call-up. He reminded and remained with the Capitals and played in every game. Protus netted his first career NHL goal in Carolina on November 28th. And, uh, you know, just that that initial scoring is kind of a, a big thing for, for him. You know, because sometimes these guys, they get their big call up and then they kind of fizzle out. In, in December, the Belarus pivot spent the entire month with the Washington Capitals. He contributed a goal and an assist in December for the parent club, his goal opened the scoring in a 5-2 to two win over Columbus on December 4th. Um, taking a look in January, Protus spent all of January with the Capitals and, and was reassigned to Hershey in February. And that was a tough moment for him because you got to think about these players. They get the taste of the big time. They're playing on the Capitals. They're playing in the NHL. This is what they dreamed about their whole life. And then to get... Sent down to Hershey, I think that that's got to be a bit humbling. In February, protests returned to the Bears for the February in February 11th game in Lee, Lee Valley and played Hershey's final nine games of the month. In his second game back, the center recorded a two-point game. He set up Mike Vecchioni, first period power play with a diagonal pass to the left circle from along the goal line. Protest drew a penalty in the second period and then scored on an ensuing power play with a laser from the left circle. And there's videos associated with it. And so just if you look it up on YouTube or something, he does does have a good goal scoring touch in March after posting a single point in his first seven games in March protest came protest's game came to life in the last five games of the month. He netted two goals and added a pair of helpers uh, in those uh, five contests. The goal originally credited to Gersich was ultimately credited to protest and um, just some big things. And what they're doing is they're just kind of talking about where did he play throughout last season in April protest was Hershey's best forward in the month of April. It was his most productive month of the season. Protus netted two goals and dished out seven helpers for nine points in the month. The nine points were the most of a bears player in April. His seven assists were tied 
uh, for the most on the team of the month. He recorded his first three-point game of the season on April 9th against Springfield. Protest started his night by taking a Mike Vecchioni feed from his net, moving out in front and jamming the puck past Charlie Lindgren. Maybe that's a name you've heard of before to give Hershey a two to one lead late in the first. And Mike Vecchioni, he's another one I think that is going to be poised to make his uh, big spot on this team going forward. And uh, I think that the Capitals just have some really young and great talent that's going to take some time to kind of filter its way up. But I do think that the Capitals are going to be sitting in a good position in the uh, in the future going forward. You know, like I talked about, you know, it's not necessarily going to be overnight that you're going to see all new players in there. And I don't think that you would like uh, the outcome of that if you saw all these younger players because the Capitals last season, that's what they had in the beginning of last season when there was a bunch of injuries was a bunch of these young players. And, you know, when I talked with some of these different um, um, Capitals insiders, one of the things that they say is, these young players had flashes of greatness, but it wasn't sustainable. And uh, if you're going to be an NHL team and you have grand plans of doing things, uh, you know, finishing in the top of your division and moving into the postseason, then you're going to have to have more um, uh, veteran players uh, on your lineup. You're not going to be able to play with exclusively uh, younger players um, because, you know, if you, I mean, take a look at it with Alex Ovechkin and company. Could you imagine if it was just Alex Ovechkin and a bunch of young players out there? How do you think that would do? Like I've talked about before, one guy cannot do everything. All right. Thank you for making Locked On Capitals your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On NHL. Locked On expert experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked On NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast. So just some bright things uh, coming ahead for this Capitals team. I got to say, some really good depth, some really great younger players in the pipeline that I think are going to get their chance, you know, maybe this season and if not this season in the years to come. But I do think that the outlook for this Capitals team is good. I think that they're sitting in a good position to go into next season with the the moves that Brian McClellan made. I think that, you know, these areas of concern, you know, that's what we were always talking about. Who's going to fill in for Tom Wilson and, and, and Nick Backstrom? Brian McClellan took care of all those. So at least for next season, I think the Capitals are in a, in a good position to do big things. And then going forward down, down the line, you know, two, three years, I think you will start to see more of these young, younger players uh, integrate into this team. All right. So once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, and I'll talk to you next time.